What would have to change for you to even consider coaching again? I mean, what would have to evolve for that to even come up? I haven't even thought about it. You know, I am, uh, I'm hoping that I, I said this before, I fall in love with something. You know, I, I fell in love with a student athlete, so I'm hoping I'm gonna have an administrative role here. I'm hoping I get knee deep in that, and that fills that void of, because there's a void, huge void. It's certainly not gonna be taking walks and playing golf and that's it, see you later. That's, that will not happen. If you were commissioner for a day and there's something about the system that you don't like, whether it's student athlete welfare or the, the playoff process, is there something that just jumps out to you as saying, I would fix that if I was in charge? Yeah, I think the amount of money, effort, research, uh, resources put into student athlete welfare is great. And I want to say, I don't know everybody's, I know us. Right. And there's no stone that's left unturned as far as you talking about the health of a player, the welfare of a player, whether it be a sports psychologist, whether it be the trainers, you know, the, the, all the stuff we, the science we use to make sure we're not overworking guys and sure. putting our body in harm ways, harm's way. The only thing I'd look at as a recruiting calendar is I get more concerned with the people that want to speed it up. That's why you're seeing more transfers, that's why you're seeing more people that are feel pressured. At the end of the day, commissioners really don't matter. They don't, I know they think they do. Uh, coaches don't matter, I know they think they do. What matters is that 17-year-old person making the decision. November, the end of the fall. Gray skies, cold. But in Ohio and in Michigan, November calls for joy an annual reunion which unites two states, yet divides them by colors, by loyalty. I just hope that people know that I gave everything I had. By hate. I absolutely despise that school. It's just a football game. Hey, have a good game today, guys. <laughs> yeah, good, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> At the end, the loser congratulates the winner, and life marches on. But for one Saturday, every November, life stops here. Scarlet and gray versus maize and blue. It's what's normal, it's what's right. Tomorrow will be that Saturday in this place when for three hours, life will stop. It's ours, it's the rivalry, it's November. times, never for a traveling trophy, but many times for a championship. And tomorrow, a tradition, Ohio State only rolls out for the Michigan game in Columbus. So every other year, the Tunnel of Pride formed by Buckeye football alumni. Just another way to show this game is just not like the others. And we join you tonight with a live look as the Ohio State marching band just back from their trip to New York City and the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Here they are rehearsing Script Ohio as they'll perform it in pregame tomorrow. Just out Hours before the biggest game of the season. We'll have much more on their trip to New York ahead in just a few minutes. We welcome you live here overlooking the band practice field just outside Ohio Stadium. Welcome to the rivalry, an hour-long look at Ohio State versus Michigan, the greatest rivalry in all of college football. Joined tonight by Coach Bill Conley. So many great stories to share with you over the next hour. Bill, you were a part of this game either as a player or coach 21 yep. times. Yep. Is there one game? that stands out as most memorable to you? Well, I think as a player, it had to be 1970. We had been upset in Ann Arbor the year before. We got them in Columbus that year, and I'll tell you what, we played a great game. Walk-on linebacker Rick Furco caused a fumble on the opening kickoff. We took it. We ended up getting a, a score out of that. We went on to win 20 to 9. And after the game? Oh, sweet revenge. We go in the locker room. Woody's talking to us. Our equipment manager, the great John Bozick, sticks his head in the window in the door. He says, Coach, you got a phone call. Woody says, Boz, I'm talking to the players. He says, Well, you got an important phone call. Who's it from? He said, The president. Woody said, What president? He goes, President Nixon. Woody looks at Bose, says, Tell him he's got to wait. I got to talk to my players first. <laughs> it's an incredible story. And the thing is, this rivalry is full of those incredible anecdotes over more than 100 years of football. We're going to spend ample time, of course, tonight breaking down the matchup. We'll see tomorrow, Ohio State, Michigan. And first, let's go back to Audrey Hassan. She's live in our studio tonight with a look at the, uh, we'll call it the Thanksgiving buffet of what else is ahead <laughs> in the show tonight. 
only the best leftovers. Bidding for this biggest game of the year that we'd bring you an hour's worth of history and highlights of the rivalry, Jared. A rivalry moment Ohio State fans will never forget. 2002, undefeated Buckeyes favored to take care of the Wolverines in Jim Tressel's second year in Columbus. It was a defensive slugfest in the fourth quarter. Ohio State driving the pitch to Maurice Hall and the Buckeyes break through. They lead it 13-6 and the Wolverines final toss down field intercepted to end it. In a season of dramatic finishes, this only set up the Buckeyes wild win in the national championship game against Miami. Welcome back to the show. The city of Toledo that sits along the Ohio Michigan State border holds a number of connections in this rivalry. Head coach Urban Meyer and head coach Jim Harbaugh were both born at the same hospital in downtown Toledo. The battle between the state of Ohio and the Michigan Territory started in the 1800s over a piece of land known as the Toledo Strip. The governors in both states wanted Toledo for trade purposes and the argument became known as the Toledo War. But much like the modern day rival football game between the states, no blood was ever shed between the neighboring militia. Another common link, the Buckeye Wolverine shop in downtown Toledo. It's a store that opened 35 years ago to please both the Buckeye fans and Wolverine fans from divided homes in the rivalry. Well, Ohio State's a massive campus surrounded by hundreds of roads where students live and work. It just so happens one of those roads happens to be called Michigan Avenue. As NBC Force Katie Farrell found out, it's a great place to live with the exception of Rivalry Week. It's a perfectly pleasant street to live on. 358 days of the year. We live on Michigan Avenue. <laughs> For one particular week each fall, the people who call Michigan Avenue home would rather not disclose where they live. You can't really say it this time of year, but we do live on Michigan. Yeah, so. it's, it's a hard week to live on Michigan Avenue. Michigan Avenue, just off campus and home to many Ohio State students, becomes Michigan Avenue during Rivalry Week. One of the Michigan street signs sadly didn't make it this year. So. I thought it would have been gone sooner, honestly, but then last week it was like falling down and then it's gone. Roommates Summer Prevost, Meredith Fennell, and Molly Kowalczyk say don't judge them for their unfortunate street name. Just I can't. feel like we always kind of hesitate when we like say where we live. Like we were ordering pizza the other day and when oh, we no. said our address they were like, ew, why do you live on that street? They bleed scarlet and gray. Just don't ask them where they live until after the big game. And coming up in the show, we'll tell you more about the Ohio State Marching Band's first ever trip to the Macy's Day Parade. Here's a live look as they rehearse their show for the Game of Games tomorrow. For joining us at 7, I'm Mark Taylor. We have team coverage tonight. NBC4, Sean Lanier and Rob Sneed talk to fans inside and outside the shoe. But we want to begin with NBC4 Sports Director Jared Smalley with what head coach Urban Meyer had to say about that game. Jared? Hey, good evening, Mark. He had a lot to say, by the way. If this was ever going to happen for Michigan, it was going to be this year, right? They'd won 10 straight games, number one rated defense in America really hungry for a win against their rivals who admittedly Ohio State they had struggled off and on throughout this entire season instead it was more Buckeye dominance over the Wolverines in nationally impressive fashion senior day warmth you know that stadium was rocking and rolling electric countered by Wolverine hate less than four minutes into the game Buckeyes get the ball rolling Dwayne Haskins to freshman Chris Olave seven nothing Michigan kicks a pair of field goals but had no answer for the Buckeye passing game Olave again the freshman's second touchdown of the day Michigan scores two touchdowns within three plays at the end of the first half to get the lead down to 21 19 Buckeyes did kick a late field goal to extend the lead to 24 19 at halftime third quarter the play of the game again Olave the block punt leads to a seven banks touchdown run and the Bucks start a feeding frenzy. Michigan simply could not slow Ohio State down. Paris Campbell gets to the edge and says goodbye to that team up north. A 78 yard sprint, the longest OSU play from scrimmage ever against Michigan. Haskins threw five touchdowns for the day, more than 300 yards against the nation's top ranked defense. And for the first time ever, Ohio State tops 60 points against Michigan. The Buckeyes head to the Big Ten title game with an emphatic victory, 62-30. 39 beat blue again. I don't know about 62, but I know we're going to come out here and put on a show. So um, I'm proud of how we played today. Sports director Jared Smalley is following the Buckeyes in Southern California.
Good afternoon from Universal City, California, right near the lot of Universal Studios. And we came here today for a specific reason, to meet a specific Buckeye fan. Obviously, the Buckeyes have come to his backyard. And he's not just any Buckeye fan. J.K. Simmons, Academy Award winner for the movie Whiplash in 2014. His performance won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. J.K. is an enormous Ohio State fan and bleeds scarlet and gray even here in California. Grew up in the Worthington area, went to Thomas Worthington High School for a brief time, was also an Ohio State student. Well, I watch Ohio State games by myself up upstairs in our house, usually on the DVR because I can't take the stress. Mm -hmm. I, I got to learn how to relax and just enjoy the game and I'm working on it. I'm working on just enjoying it instead of instead of being stressed out about it. You know how many Buckeye fans actually relax and watch the game? Zero yeah, point zero. zero. Yeah. No one does that. I, yeah, I don't know. It's too important. It is. It's weirdly important. <laughs> Why do you think you connected with that culture where you carried it with you your whole life? Well, it was a formative time, you know. I mean, my whole adolescence, I was going to the shoe back when it actually was a shoe. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, those are those father son times and, and uh, uh, you know, watching the Scarlet and Gray and watching, uh, you know, Rex Kern and Archie Griffin and uh, some of those great teams from the 60s and 70s. Uh, that's just what I grew up on, you know, and that's my attachment to really, honestly, more than any of this. Uh, Worthington was where I, I was living growing up at the time and, you know, played football and, and all that. but. Uh, but really, it's going to Ohio State games that's, uh, that's my fondest memory of growing up there. Urban's last game, you're going to be there for it. If you could, um, could give Ohio State a pregame speech, understanding the emotion behind the game, the meaning of the game, what would you say to the Buckeyes? I, I think from my impression as a, you know, a devoted fan, but obviously an outsider to the locker room, you know, I, I think all you got to say is do this for Urban and do this for each other. I mean, that's my speech right there. It's not heaven, it's Pasadena. For more than a century, the home to college football greats. And this year, one of the sport's greatest will end his career here. The love I have and respect I have for this place to know that, you know, in a small way we added to it, that uh, that's very humbling and, and I love it. At a school where legends live, Urban Meyer might be the greatest of them all. He's leaving it uh, on top, and that's why we want it so bad to, to see us win uh, this Rose Bowl. And for players and fans, it's the motivation to hoist one more trophy. We sent the best coach in um, college football history out with a bang, and we sent him out the right way. I think all you got to say is do this for Urban and do this for each other. For the first time in nearly a decade, Ohio State has returned to Southern California. Sunday, the Buckeyes taking their team photo outside the Rose Bowl. Ohio State's 15th ever trip to Pasadena, their first ever meeting though here with the University of Washington. And it is late afternoon here in downtown Los Angeles. This is a perfect time to turn this city into Columbus West. Thousands of Buckeyes, including Urban Meyer, gathered here for the Buckeye Bash tailgate party outside Staples Center. They're open to belt out a whole bunch of OHIOs tomorrow, about 20 minutes from here up in Pasadena. With that, welcome live to our Gridiron Nation special live in L.A. I'm Jared Smalley here outside Staples Center. We're going to check with Audrey Hassan and Coach Bill Conley in just a moment as we continue our coverage of the Rose Bowl. Ohio State's going to go a full 31 days between games, between the Big Ten Championship game and the game they'll play tomorrow out in Pasadena. So they've been talking about the Rose Bowl for about 30 days now. And they talk some more today because the head coaches got together one final news conference for Urban Meyer as the Ohio State head coach. He's never coached in a Rose Bowl. Neither has Washington's Chris Peterson. Oddly enough, they're the two winningest active head coaches by percentage in major college football. And tomorrow they'll meet as Meyer hopes to retire a winner yet again. Both sides fighting nerves and distractions. What runs through a coach's mind is... Let's head back to Columbus. Audrey Hassan and Coach Bill Conley standing by. 
All right, thank you, Jared. Pleased to be joined once again this season by former Ohio State assistant coach Bill Conley. Coach, as someone who's mentored players, you've been around them, you understand the emotion of the game. For these seniors, now you add in the last game for Urban Meyer. How do these players handle that emotion and focus on the game? Well, think about the last six weeks for these guys. They played a great game against Michigan. They win the Big Ten championship. Then the coach says he's going to retire. So they've really been on a roller coaster.